Welcome back, everybody. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I had a video out. Um, that was due to me getting the Kawasaki W1 registered. And what a pain that was. Every other bike, I've done the same exact way. This one, this one, the Honda, the Triumph, the XS2, which I just did earlier this year. Um, you get temporary plates, which is what I had. You take the bike, you bring it down for a VIN verification and inspection, which I did. It passed that. I went back to motor vehicles. It already had been registered to me once. I had the paperwork and the lady refused to register it saying that my VIN verification which was done at motor vehicles needed to be done at an emission station which it absolutely does not now we have to make appointments for registrations so that wasted an hour of my time there um, I had to make another appointment and I did it at different motor vehicles because I didn't want to take the chance of getting that same lady again who doesn't know Jack, um, which was another week away. So that was on Friday. Today is Sunday. Um, I went there, gave her all my paperwork, the same exact paperwork I gave the other lady, and she gave me plates. So I emailed uh, motor vehicles and told them they got to train their people better and you know make them learn their stuff so you see the xs1b here tank is off now as you know about a year ago it was just about a year ago now i went to kick that start this thing and it kicked back and put me out of commission for a couple of months my ankle is still sore to this day, so I don't know if there was a slight fracture or what the heck it did, but man, did it kick back. Then, on this box here, I changed the dip switches so that it would start at about 5 degrees before top dead center. Should not kick back at all. This spring, when I went to start it, it had a violent kickback again. So, what I did was I emailed the company that makes this. And yes, there can be violent kickback due to the way this system is set up. What it does, and it does it by, this is odd, it sees the revolution of the engine the first time. It sees the mark getting it ready to fire, and then it sees the fire. And on the next revolution, within, you know, milliseconds probably, it does it by time. It estimates what time that thing should fire. Now, if you have an electric start, you're good. If you have kick start, the problem is, is that as it comes up on compression the second time, it could slow your kick down. And if it does... It will fire before that piston gets to the top, giving you that violent kickback. And they know it's an issue, but that's the way their system is. So, it's happened to me a couple of times really good. And that's, that's enough. Not a young kid anymore who can just walk it off. So, what I plan to do now... It is a combination charging ignition system going by the crankshaft. We'll keep the charging system part of it, and we will change the ignition part of it back to camshaft. It's not the ideal situation, but this bike has one running off the camshaft, and this thing never kicks back. This is the only bike that gives me a kickback problem. And, uh, yeah, you don't know when it's coming. It's like Russian roulette. 
you know, you're so confident in it. You're, I'm going to give it a good, strong kick. And then, yeah, you're limping around for the next half hour. So without further ado, let's get the coil and this off, get these covers off, and we'll... I got all these parts here that I've had. I've had I have like two or three different um, electronic ignition setups here. I got a point set up there. Um, these were all things I tried on that bike. A couple of them absolutely did not work. I had some kickback on this with one with two of those systems, and I found out that when they mounted the pickup, they mounted it on the wrong side of the plate. So. <laughs> While you could set the timing, you know, with a light, when you went to kick it, it was absolutely bad. All right, let's get into this. Grease this up, slide this in. This is for our, well, what used to be points plate, and our advance, going back in. I had to put the pin back in the cam that I had taken off before. And now, the advance unit has a slot down here. And that's gonna go in is and then we're gonna put a lock nut on there okay we got the lock nut tightened now we have to put the let's get this in here take two hands because I got to hold the shaft on the other side get that in there we're gonna put a lock washer and nut on that side then we got to put the weights in and they go in these holes here. I should say that there's a line right here and a line right here. So you probably should keep them together. Okay, got the springs, the weights, the clips, all that back together. I can pretty much put the cover on this side because I'm done over here. One more thing, you just want to make sure that these weights snap back and that's stuck. Next, we're going to install the pickup. It should go like right here. Then we'll put a couple of new screws in there. We will replace our coil and try to set our timing. get to put one of these on the wires so it kind of makes it watertight I like to put a little slice in there and open them up just because threading them on here can be a real pain and this just makes it real easy to get it on there okay wires up underneath here bring them up to where our coil is going to be all right so it literally just took a few minutes to remove the old coil and uh, control box there and now we are going to mount a 5 ohm coil which will work for this I had a coil and I thought it was 5 ohm and when I owned it out it was like 2 and you want two for electronic ignition, but these were designed to work with like five ohm coils. It, when they had the dual one like that, that one's got the dual pickup on it. That one is running two coils and that one they're like five ohm coils each because they're designed to run with the stock coils. So <clears throat> this one will get a five ohm coil. I think I have a bracket that I've been holding on to for some years and we'll mount it up there. 
So this is my dual fire coil. Came with a harness that uh, with bullet connectors, so you just screw one in on one, one to the other. There is no positive and negative markings on these. Uh, dual fire coils, it's not gonna matter. This is the bracket that I've had hanging around. So this will sit here. Problem is when it's mounted, these are too low. If you try to flip it this way, they're too high. So I'm going to have to make some spacers and stand it off, you know, up there a little bit so these wires can come out. So I had to make some plug wires. These are solid core. They have zero ohm resistor caps on it. Strip this down, you know, put a boot on it, strip that down, lock that on that side and crimp that. And then I should have two plug wires made. My 5 ohm coil is in. I had to make spacers. Barely fits in there, but it does. Whew. Now, what I have to do is hook this up to the harness, to the wires here for the pickup. Get it on top dead center. Get a test light. And set it so it fires somewhere... Hmm, I don't know where I'm gonna set this. Somewhere maybe around 10 degrees. We'll see, before top dead center, we'll see. Okay, I had to do some very sketchy wiring. But I have it hooked up from my test light here to the coil and the other end to ground. So, hopefully you can see the test light. On. The light is on. We don't want that on. So we're going to go all the way around here. Our light should be going out. Coil should be charging. Back around. And let's see. The light should be coming on. Very slowly, right there. All right, so. This is my top dead center mark. That's where it's firing. And about a half an inch before top dead center is about where you want it. Ignore this line, that means nothing. <laughs> so, we're pretty close. I guess the next thing to do would be button up and try it. It's not that I want to keep you in suspense, but right now um, I won't be able to test ride this bike. My battery is low, so I have to charge that. And there's a dumpster in my driveway. It's another thing I've been doing for the last week and a half. We're cleaning out a whole bunch of stuff from our house. Maybe motorcycle parts that are no good. And that's blocking the driveway right now. So, I will charge this battery, put the tank back on, and I will see you in the next one, where I may also have an update on the W1 as far as rejetting. Because I did rejet that one, so now I have to make sure that one runs all right. And I'm still working on the charging system on that one, of course. Right? So, thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one, hopefully as soon as possible, so I don't keep you hanging. Uh, take care, and I'll see you later.